Eddie Stobart is one of the most recognisable haulage companies in Britain. They're an institution, aren't they? They've been around since I can remember. Their drivers cover the distance to the moon and back every day, making deliveries every four seconds. But anything can go wrong. It's come up air consumption critical. Nightmare. For the planners back at base, it's a logistical time bomb. You just keep that load on Tom, John, come on. And for their 3,000 drivers on the front line, it can be trucking hell. The bad day has just turned into a, a disaster. This week, a driver takes on a mission impossible. My word today is now it's just all gone to pop. We've not hit one delivery on time. A female trucker takes charge of a monster set of wheels. It's awesome driving them. The first day I sat in it, I felt about this big. And the Eddie spotters are up in arms when a new truck joins the fleet. It's not my cup of tea. We should go on straight. We shan't spot Eddie's anymore. Eddie Stobart is the fastest growing haulage company in the UK, supplying 16 million tonnes of goods a year. The product has to be delivered to all the superstores and supermarkets, because if it doesn't, then everybody goes hungry. They've won lucrative contracts and now have a turnover of half a billion a year, delivering to some of the high street's biggest names. Their customers expect the goods to be delivered on time and in perfect condition. And if they're not, the loads get sent back. Stobart has a returns team that deals with the difficult job of rejects. Basically, we clean up all the crap bread people don't want. 32-year-old Mark Dixon is one of their drivers, and he's got a non-stop job. I'll always tip, reload, tip, reload. I've always got stuff on my trailer, I'm never really empty. The returns team is based at Crick in the Midlands, but Stobart has 40 depots across the UK. Each one has a return shed, and Mark has to collect from any one of them, delivering the rejects back to the supplier. Cheers, Scott. So he spends five nights a week living in his truck and is known as a tramper. That's me, lunch, breakfast, dinner and tea. The man who organises Mark's hectic schedule is his returns manager, 36-year-old Gary Watson. Can I just take it out to Beckton? I'll take it. OK, no, change plan, take it to Beckton. See the reason for that rejection there? It's been damaged. Some customers are like really thinking, we had a fly trapped in one of the treatment wraps. That was just a normal fly. He got to the customer and he rejected it because he infested one fly. Logistically, it's a nightmare. I sit there sometimes banging my head against the keyboard trying to sort it out. It's 8.30am Tuesday morning, and as usual, Gary's planned a crazy schedule for Mark. Right, OK, so you're going from Crick to Lutterworth, back into Crick, nearly in Doncaster and Balmer. Yeah? yeah? I'm on it, kid, I'm on it. Yeah. You know what I'm Gary's very serious for his job. There's times when you, you physically can't do what he asks you to do. But Gary will find a way to make you do it. The drivers probably call me <laughs> I tell her or something. I don't know, but they probably call me something that I don't know about. But generally, they just call me Gary. The returns team have to shift around 500 pallets a day to any one of Stobart's thousands of clients. Uh, shadow, 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 shadow. Before Mark hits the road, he has to find his load of washing powder and fizzy drinks. Where have you moved, bastard? Mark searches for his ten pallets in a haystack of a hundred. So out of all this, I've got to find two pallets, ten cases. We keep hunting. Mark's got to make three drop-offs locally before making a final delivery at Doncaster, over a hundred miles away. Where's Sarah Lee? Sarah Lee will be somewhere about small build there somewhere. We'll put it in Jane Jane. Doncaster is a time-sensitive delivery. If he's late, the load could be turned away. If he gets rejected from Doncaster, we're pretty much... I won't swear. But, yeah, we're, up the we're, up the we're a bit stuck. 
Will Mark find his load and get on the road in time? We'll find out later. 50 miles north at Newark, near Nottingham, is Stobart's chilled depot. Delivering fresh food to our supermarkets is big business, worth 90 million quid to the company. So they can't afford to get it wrong. Everything has to be delivered on time. Nobody wants out-of-date cream cakes or mouldy sandwiches. Out of Stobart's 3,000 trailers, 350 of them are refrigerated. They deliver over a million tonnes of perishable goods a year. 28-year-old chill driver Fiona Solchak is in charge of one of their 40-ton refrigerated trucks. It's awesome driving them. First day I sat in it, I felt about this big. Fiona is one of 14 female truckers out of 3,000 drivers Stobart employs. A typical trucker, big belly, hairy, middle-aged, and then me, I think, is uh, just blown that well out. Fiona already had two years HGV experience before she started at Stobart's, which came as a surprise to her planner, Dave. The last thing you would expect is to say she was a truck driver. It's the last thing I thought she was when she walked through the door. They just assumed I was going to be in the office. And I was like, no, I'm come to take one of the lorries out. When Fiona arrives for work, it's hard to miss her. Today, she's working the late shift. You know what you don't do, yeah. Do you? Lawrence, Didcot, Didcot, Oakland's. You want to ring us once you've tipped and. Okay, I'll go to my lorry now. Fiona gets a different truck every day. Each one is named after a girl. It's a Stobart tradition. This is my girl for the day, Sandra Molly. Sandra Molly is produced by truck manufacturer Scania. Before she takes her out, Fiona has to check the five Susies are attached. Cables that connect the truck's electrics and brakes to the trailer. This is our red airline. It's also the hardest one to get in as well. And this is the one I've actually had trouble with before, and I've been unable to go anywhere until I've had Scania come out and rescue me. Every guy in the lorry world is always like, how do you manage with the red line? Do you have to ask for help? And I'm like, no. <laughs> Today, Fiona's first job is collecting cakes from a local bakery near Newark before delivering them to Tesco supermarket over 130 miles away in Didcot. Cream cakes are a notoriously delicate cargo, so Fiona's gonna have to take great care. If you go around the corner too fast, you're doomed. It's the worst load you can take, <laughs> just cream cakes, oh my God. If you break hard, there's gonna be a big creamy mess in the back. <laughs> As Fiona approaches the bakery, 50 miles away at Crick, returns driver Mark Dixon's not even left the warehouse. He's found his pallets of returned goods, but his woes are far from over. All of a sudden it's gone wrong now. I've got the fuel tanker turned up, so one of the warehouse lads has had to go sort him out with all the paperwork, and then the double fork truck has got to go around the corner now. I'm now left fork truckless. <laughs> Problem. With no one to load Mark's truck, Gary's well-laid plans are in tatters. You think a day's gonna go well, and you wake up and you come in and it just it goes straight on its arse. Coming up, the big boss isn't happy. The M6 is closed north of 31A, south of 32. Such crap, innit? Terrible. Hello? Gary, I'm stuck. And will Mark ever get on the road? We can't afford this Doncaster to fail. We just can't. When Eddie Stobart make a delivery, they aim to hit their time window within half an hour. And when it comes to their chilled division, they can't afford to get it wrong. If they do, tons of fresh food could be headed for the skip instead of the shelves. We have to make sure that we get this stuff collected and delivered on time. If it's not, then it's goodbye Vienna and we have to pick up the cost. Fiona Soltsiak started at Stobart's two and a half years ago. She's helped brighten the place up a bit. You know she's here because her pink car's in there. It sticks out like a sore thumb. Pink bag sitting down the bottom and she's got a pink hairband on. It's messing my hair up all that wind. I like to, you know, look after myself. I'm not saying they don't, but <laughs> you can have a shave. Lots of people don't believe that I do this for a job. They won't have none of it <laughs> at all. <laughs> I think I just lie. <laughs> 
Today, Fiona's just arriving at a bakery to pick up cream cakes, but she's not the only one. Oh, legs. <laughs> What's the cue? Me, this one, Tony, you. That's all right. And then the other five round the corner. <laughs> it's very rare that there's this many of us here waiting. Another one. <laughs> It's a busy bakery, but it's only got four loading bays. So Fiona and the trucks are queuing on the road. People that are already on the bays, their loads aren't complete, so we've got to wait for them to be finished before I can go on. The longer Fiona has to wait, the shorter the shelf life of her load. Of course, it's always pushing against the time now. We've got fresh cakes on today, fresh cream. It's a... Uh, so smelly and moldy. <laughs> but there's a clever bit of hardware that's designed to keep the load chilled to perfection. On the back of Fiona's truck is one of Stobart's latest chilled trailers. It's thermally insulated and fitted with an industrial fridge unit at the front. The temperature can be set from a balmy plus 20 to an icy minus 20 degrees centigrade. Cleverly, the trailer can be split in two. An internal door pulls down to make two chambers controlled by separate thermostats. So loads requiring different temperature settings can be carried at the same time. Precious time's ticking away. So after half an hour, Fiona takes matters into her own hands. There's another two out there. There's him and another one. But I'm running late, so we're going to have to get a jiffy on when I get going. Yeah, sure. All right. Right, okay. After putting the pressure on, result. Her 2,000 cream cakes are on board. It is a bit of a push. You can't be rushing round roundabouts or anything in the sliders like that. So she'd better get on the road. <laughs> After spending part of the morning waiting for his trailer to be filled, Returns driver Mark Dixon has made his first delivery. Don't pull it, sir. Start dropping on the way. <laughs> and is on his way to his second. Well, I've been playing catch now all day, trying to catch myself back up. Gary will be stressing out now. Obviously, he likes things to be done on time. It's up to planning manager Gary Watson to salvage the day's schedule. Oh, God. Gary's worked his way up through Stobart's as a planner for the last nine years. Got a varied career from KFC to med student to basically Stobart's. I finally settled on what I wanted to do, was basically work in the haulage industry. You know, it's the best thing that ever happened, really. It takes a certain type of person to be a trucking planner. I'm very temperamental. I'll call a spade a spade, basically. I'll just say, look, you know, we need to get it sorted now. Done, thanks. He's a bit impatient. Yes. Fiery is the way they put it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a lot more fiery mm. than you. It's annoying. Just <laughs> Everyone's a winner. As they say, winner, winner, chicken dinner. End of the day, Gary dictates what I earn. Without Gary, I haven't got a job. Without me, Gary ain't got a job. He stresses, I chill out. Gary's stress levels have just gone up. Mark's still got two more local deliveries to make, but he's scheduled to be in Doncaster, 100 miles away, in just under two hours' time. If it's not back, we won't get any money for it. We don't get any money for it. We're effectively running it around for free of charge. The worst term in the haulage industry, free of charge. Gary keeps his beady eyes on his drivers on a high-tech GPS system called Isotrack. They're well aware that I can see everything they do. They stop at a certain place, stay too long, it flashes up. Stobart's introduced this clever gadget three years ago. It's revolutionised the business and pushed up profits, which is why company boss William Stobart can't keep his eyes off the screen. We can track every vehicle at any one time, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. We know exactly where the vehicle is. But not everyone's a fan. I feel as if I'm being watched over. It's a spy in the cab. When these first came out, we absolutely hated them. Now, when they don't work, I can't see what I'm doing. It's like driving blinds, because I'm going on, I'm guessing where I'm going next and what I'm doing. Isotrack can also show whether a truck is loaded. 
relaying the information back to the planners instantly. Red dots mean the trucks are empty, costing the company around £1.50 per mile in fuel and wages. Here, there's a lot of reds and red ones are bad. It's costing us more when we're being paid for our other job, really. It gives the bosses a running tally of how much money the company's making. So if it's not looking good, William can get straight onto his planners. Right, Lee, what's oh, the them okay. red dots on there? Um, South Coast? Yeah, what? looks crap at the moment, doesn't it? Yeah, M4 Cordra really. Right, right. Reading area, so it's about seven miles. Right, just, uh, just let you know, sorry, the M6 is closed north at 31A, south at 32. Right, OK. That totally could, that's even worse than my red dots. That's crap, isn't it? Isn't that terrible? Yeah. The M6 isn't a problem for Mark, but his schedule is. He's about to make his second drop, and it needs to be quick. Hello? Hello! You were so far behind, it's unreal. You need to get you, you, yourself sorted as fast as you can. Sweet talk, come here, give him the Dixon charm. I'll do my best, mate. I'll do my best. That doesn't work, give him the Gary charm, because that works so much better than yours. Yeah, all right. This is where it gets a bit hairy. You've got to think it's got to happen, and you've got to make it happen. If Mark's second drop-off goes smoothly, he might just stand a chance of getting his day back on track. It's a do-or-die now. In, out, trailer change, Bob's your uncle. I'm hoping it's quiet. When we get, we go around this bend, go around the next bend, and you, you just see all the trailers and lorries. Hopefully, there's not many in the middle, because it means I can just get in and get on a bay. And there you go, look. It's absolutely bombed out. Uh... There's not a fault left moving. There's someone cleaning the road and that's it. My delay has just got a hell of a lot longer. Mark's forced to call Gary. Hello? Gary, I'm stuck. It's, it's a bit busy in here, mate, so uh, yet again, I'm held up. I'm just thinking of how we're going to make time up here because we need to get to Doncaster. Uh, right. So what I you to do, actually, do some work today. <laughs> <laughs> Say hello, but turn out, mate. Oh, it's so annoying. Did you hear that as I put the phone down? You got a little faint F word. <laughs> we can't afford this Doncaster to fail. We just can't. It just it causes too many problems the rest of the week and endangers too many customers. Mark's day has turned into a disaster. We'll find out later on if it improves. The Stobart depot at Crick is bang slap in the middle of the country. It's a popular stopping off point for trucks to get refueled and washed. And it's also a paradise for eddy spotters, like Barry Turner. Stobarts are the creme de creme. They are the best by far, and they always will be my number one spot. Being a spotter takes dedication. They aim to log every single name and number in the truck fleet. The passion for Stobarts can even add a bit of spice to a relationship. Watching Eddie Stobarts, you can't stop. And uh, over the years, it just becomes a habit, doesn't it? Uh -huh. One thing leads to another. When trucker Pete O'Leary is not delivering his loads, it's his job to look after the spotters. People give the spotters a real bad name. They think that they're just sad people. But when they actually come down here and you get to know, they're really nice human beings. They're just like normal people. Today, Pete's conducting a depot tour for Eddie fans at Crick, starting with the original vintage trucks from the 1960s. You won't want to drive this nowadays. <laughs> no, no. no powered steering. Oh, can you imagine that? The highlight of the tour is always the truck park, and that's where Pete's really got to keep a close eye on them. I just have to raise my voice now and again just to call them back, because they do get a bit overexcited and run off. I like the seat. Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? Yeah, beautiful. Once they've been told off, they come back to me, like me flock of sheep. I've got the keys, so uh, you can't get into any trouble. There's a league table for the spotters. The more numbers you get, the higher your ranking. I'm in the top three. For a number of years, I've been number one, but there's one or two people who now have gone above me. There's 2,000 in the league table, and competition between the spotters at the top is fierce. There's been a time when there was a bit of spotter rage in the car park. One of the spotters, he got a bit overexcited. 
Ray Turley is one of Barry's main rivals. This one is 5012. I look down on my sheet and I find that I need it. When I first met Barry, be about two years ago, he was very open. But as soon as other people started to arrive, he suddenly doesn't want to divulge information. The spotters aren't allowed onto the truck park without Pete. But in a bid to get those all important fleet numbers, Barry will push the boundaries. I've seen Barry across the car park a few times, tried to sneak that little registration or the fleet number. Barry's even managed to rope in some of the drivers to help him on his mission. Hi, mate. Hi, Alex. How are you, mate? Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. Got your numbers for you, mate. Oh, uh, the, the tens. Off the back row. Back yeah. row. Yeah, yeah, the top one's a white scan now. Apart from that, you're all right. Yeah, thanks, mate. All right, mate. Yeah, take care. Have a good day. Thank you. What was that? Well, we're not allowed, we're not allowed to go on the truck park only with special permission. And I can see vehicles there on, on the back row, but you can't get them all. Isn't that cheating getting the driver to do it for you? No, no. It's not cheating. It's not cheating. No. Only if you see them. You guys, you guys see them all there. I don't put anything down that's not, that's not there. Barry's got his work cut out because there are fans as far afield as Holland and Germany playing for the coveted world title. One day, I'll get back to number one. I always will be. Chilled trucker Fiona is loaded up with cream cakes and on her way to a supermarket in Didcot. But her route is no picnic. There are thousands of roundabouts. This journey is like the worst one for this type of load. The gap in between the pallet and the lorry is quite big. So when you go around the corner, they tend to have a bit of a lean on. If she's not careful, she clips the curb or half brakes, the load might shoot forward, um, which obviously then can damage all the products. Tesco's would turn a lot of the product away and we ended up having to pay for it. Fiona used to be a horse groom, so she's used to carrying delicate loads. The government realised that a lot of girl grooms couldn't drive the horse boxes that they were working on the yards with. And then I got a phone call, I was like, Would you, do you want to do your class one with your MVK level two? And I was like, why not? Carrying the horses is like carrying these cakes. <laughs> Except for the horse will let you know if you've gone around the corner too fast. After 130 miles, she arrives just in time to the supermarket warehouse. But if the cream cakes aren't in perfect condition, they'll be rejected. Okay, I just hope that when he opens the door, that all of the pallets are upright. Moments of truth. <laughs> so far, so good. Good so far. <laughs> He's smiling, so they must be upright. I can go and relax and sit down and wait for them to give me the all clear to go. Returns driver Mark Dixon's three hours behind schedule. My word today is now it's just all gone to pot. Pezu is knackered. We've not hit one delivery on time, so everyone's been a knock on effect. It's just rolled on and rolled on and rolled on. Back at Crick, his planner, Gary, is enjoying some me time. I live out here when I'm stressed. It's calm, isn't it? It's lovely. It's lovely and calm and chilled. And no phone calls, no computer screens. Nothing. Right, the long, lonely walk back to the office. Gary's got to come up with a plan for Mark, who's due in Doncaster 100 miles away in just 45 minutes. And he's still got one more local delivery to make before heading north. It's a nightmare. An absolute nightmare. So, um, basically, come back in here, we'll get you Doncaster. We'll get you on your way. Yeah. You give me an ETA as soon as you're leaving here. Bush, 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 phone up Doncaster. Clean him up, be really nice to him. And see if they'll let us still take him there. Oh, mate, Tibet, Gary's decided to cancel Mark's local drop-off. Andy, I need tip and reload. I'm way behind now, though, mate. I need to be there in 10 minutes from Doncaster, what do you reckon? 
Yeah, for the helicopter. <laughs> to buy Mark more time, Gary's called the customer in Doncaster and managed to negotiate a later delivery. It's one of these daily situations that we have to deal with and we just crack on with it, really. Coming up... Butter X-ray 10 Delta Foxtrot Oscar. A new truck on the fleet gets the spotter's backs up. It's not my cup of tea. Not my cup of tea. There's no one down here. And Fiona has a chilling encounter. That's well creepy. <laughs> When deliveries go wrong, it's down to the Eddie Stobot returns team to sort out the mess. Then pallets there. Stick on me up, Bob. Just don't drop it on the way. <laughs> Mark Dixon is one of their drivers, and he's having a bad day. My word today is now it's just all gone to pot. We've not hit one delivery on time. His planner, Gary, organised a hectic schedule. Day, in all fairness, is not start off too well and it's just getting worse and worse and worse. So Gary cancelled one of Mark's local deliveries and begged for extra time. Now Mark's got to head up the M1 to Doncaster within two hours. I might be, I can try and claw an hour and a half back and play it right. Dumb and dumber in front, look, having a conversation. Trampers like Mark Dixon do around 500 miles a day, living away from home all week. Tramping's in your blood. Once, you, once you've done it for so many years, you can't give it up. But life on the road can take its toll on family life. Parked in London Monday night, got a phone call at 11 o'clock at night to say that my daughter Phoebe had been taken to hospital. Nothing I could do. I was stuck in London. It's been a bit of a roller coaster ride. Mark's truck, however, does have a reminder of his other daughter. Gabrielle Rose on the truck is my daughter's name. She loves it. She thinks it's brilliant that dad drives around with his daughter's name on his lorry. Drivers get first dibs on getting girls' names on the trucks, but anyone can apply. It all started in 1974, when Edward Stobart decided to fill the empty gap between the truck's radiator grill and the windscreen, and the craze caught on. The first truck we got named after it was Twiggy. It was in the charts at the time and was really fit. Then some of the drivers started to do girlfriends and wives, but that got messy. And when the trucker behind the wheel is a woman, like Fiona, it creates confusion. Whenever I've stopped at a service, people are like, is that your name? Is that your name? I'm like, no. <laughs> it's not my name. Maybe we should ask him, and his name's Bethany George, as I always get asked, if <laughs> the name on the lorry is my name. <laughs> The suggested names go before the selection committee, and they've had some strange ones. Got one request, it was like a foreign name named after his great auntie. So we went to put it on a truck, but if you looked through a mirror, if you passed the truck, it was a rude word, so we've got to watch them ones. For the fans, the waiting list to get a name on the front of a truck now runs to three years. Ina Poulton was one of the lucky ladies. That was taken on my wagon, and two days before she was withdrawn. I've got a lovely picture of that one at home. Yes. Hello, Patrick. Ina is a regular spotter at the Crick Depot. Look at this. Oh. <laughs> You're right. They all love Ina. She's been here a while now. She's a uh, regular as clockwork every Thursday. We all wave up there and she always waves back to us. Today's a special day for fellow spotter Barry Turner. After six weeks in the wilderness, He's made it back as top spotter in the league table. Yay! Told you I'll get to number one. But I've got there. <laughs> but he doesn't rest on his laurels. He and Ina have got wind of a newcomer to the fleet that's bound to ruffle a few feathers. Papa X-ray 10 Delta Foxtrot Oscar. Valentino. Hotel 4464. Tramper Simeon has just taken charge of one of the most controversial trucks ever to join the Stobart fleet. Instead of the traditional girl's name, it's the first to have a boy's name on the front. You could take it as a, as a girl's name, being Italian, but not, not boy's names for me. It's supposed to be uh, named after Valentino Rossi. Oh, right, the motorcycling. 
But it's not, it's not my cup of tea. Not my cup of tea. Of course, Strobart, let's face it, it's always been associated with girl's name, hasn't yeah. it, from the very beginning? Twiggy was, Twiggy was the first. When Twiggy, Twiggy was on there, and uh, Bonnie, Bonnie Tyler, wasn't Bonnie it? Tyler, Tyler. Yeah. yeah, Twiggy and Bonnie Tyler. I don't like boys' names, full stop. We shall go on straight, we shan't spot Eddie's anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Speak for yourself on that one. You don't we mean that. We should go on straight. You don't mean that at all. Mean, no, I don't. I know. <laughs> I hope it's not going to be a, a trend that's going to go on in the future. Because I, I think it's it's born in the image of Eddie Stobart. Mark's 15 miles away from his final delivery at Doncaster. He's got 40 minutes to make his new deadline at 5.30pm, which shouldn't be a problem but this just isn't his day. We've got a truck in front of us here, hauling the massive white piece of shit. I don't know what that is, but I can't get past him. So I'm just gonna have to sit here. It's gonna take him to have a slight swerve and it'll be game over. I wanna see another lorry come past me and try it. If he does it, I'll follow him. <laughs> can't see his mirrors look. He won't know I'm here. No, I can't pass him. Mark finally gets past the wide load but he's only got minutes before his delivery slot expires. Look at him there, did you see that? Completely cut me up then, that car. On the outside lane, then turn left. That's why I've gone through him all the time. What an idiot. After a hellish day, Mark makes his Doncaster delivery by the skin of his teeth. I was getting a bit worried that he were going to do it. We were going to fail the customer returns, but obviously, luckily, it worked out OK. That is an absolute bobby dazzler. I'm impressed with that. I fueled up and I can get where I want to be now tonight. Bit sweaty, bit smelly, but we've done it. Mark heads to Doncaster Services. 20 minutes later, he's in for a treat. His children, seven year old Gabrielle and 11 year old Connor, are dropped off by mum to meet their dad. Is that Gabby on there? What does that say on there? Yeah, Your name, innit? So I told the bag because there's all the stuff on the bed. I might smell a bit. Go on. Remember that? Did we get that you for Father's Day? Yeah, you got me that. Our two kids. There's just one missing, isn't there? Yeah. Yes, Phoebe. Phoebe, she's at home. Are you going to miss me now until next time you see me? Yeah. How much? Um, the bigger the world. That'll do. Later that evening, and Mark's family have returned home, leaving him to an intimate dinner with fellow driver Simeon. Obviously, you're by yourself all day, so you've got plenty to say to someone when you pack around at night time. Talk, diesel, whatever. You just have a laugh of him. When you're getting this late and you're hungry, it'll do for emergencies. Gordon Ramsay, I'd love to challenge him to do a 15-hour day and then do a stir-fry on the back of a truck. <laughs> Size of that. <laughs> right. A lot of people used to call me the one-pan chef. Basically, if it goes in a walk and I can stir fry it, that's my speciality. See, I must admit, I'm quite impressed with that. That smells lovely, that does. Mark's healthy eating habits have paid off. Look at this, look, compared to mine. It's all boat and pig, boy, that. <laughs> Doing this job sitting down all day, innit? You don't get much exercise. It does. I used to be 28 weeks, which I did. What, when you was about four? <laughs> For trampers like Mark and Simeon, their cab is their home away from home. All the comforts of a two-up, two-down are squeezed into the space the size of a London taxi. When they get their heads down, there's a six-foot, six-inch bed with a 30-inch wide mattress. Drivers customise their cabs with all the mod cons, from microwaves to flat-screen TVs. Everything but the kitchen sink. Plenty of storage, a heater, and for privacy, every cab comes with a wraparound curtain. All that's missing is a toilet, but they're working on that. Meanwhile, night driver Fiona's back on the road. She's got a load of dairy products to pick up for the supermarket shelves in the morning. I don't think half of people realise where their food comes from, never mind that <laughs> we deliver their food, their food they get in the day at night time. <laughs> Fiona's already travelled 130 miles from Newark to Didcot, and she's now heading 80 miles to collect a load from a farm near Redditch, which means she has to go off-roading. Oh, this farm is proper off the beaten track. It's down a narrow lane. The 
first time was scary because I, I didn't know how long down this lane I had to go. I didn't know if I was going to meet anything coming towards me. Who's going to go backwards all the way in the pitch black to let the other one pass? <laughs> Fiona makes it in one piece, but she's not out of the woods yet. Scott, there's no one down here. It's just like completely random, disused place. Yeah, it's well creepy. <laughs> I'm just gonna go and grab my doors. While she waits for the warehouse staff to arrive, Fiona retreats to the safety of a truck. It makes me feel weird. It's not like Tesco's where it's all lit up and you've got somewhere designated to go and wait. But when you're on your own like this, it is a bit sort of just always looking around. Nothing's going to happen like that, but it always plays on your mind. But uh, doors are locked. <laughs> not even getting around. All Stobart drivers have a panic button in their cabs. If a driver's got a problem, be it someone's trying to get into his unit or he's got a health problem, having a heart attack or anything like that, it can press this button in the cab and it'll show up on the planner's ISO track here that there's a problem and it'll also show up on the big screen. The planners will then alert the police. We've had one of our drivers hijacked in, in the past. He had his trailer taken. They've actually kidnapped him for a period of time and um, he, yeah, he ended up on the side of the road all beaten up. But Fiona has no need to panic. She's getting loaded with cheese and only has to worry about getting to her final drop-off. Definitely starting to feel the tiredness, ready to finish. After 210 miles and 10 hours on the road, Fiona's got a trick up her sleeve to get her onto the home straight. I've got my memory stick with some music on it. None of this smooth radio stuff, none of that. <laughs> the rave music does the trick, and Fiona delivers the goods for the supermarket dairy counters in time. Coming up, Mark's in for a blow. You're losing your truck. You're going to have to give up Gabriella, I'm afraid. I'm shaken. <laughs> and a brand new Stobart truck gets wrapped in record time. For the Eddie Stobart Trampers, their truck is their home on wheels five nights a week. Over the last two years, Mark Dixon spent time and money personalising his truck, Gabrielle Rose, and he's very attached. I live in it, it's my home, and it's got my daughter's name on the front. So all the spotters that see it, they're writing my daughter's name down. After a day from hell yesterday, he was rewarded with seeing the real Gabrielle Rose and his son, Connor. Are you going to miss me now until next time you see me? Yeah. How much? Um, the bigger the world. That'll do. Before Mark goes back out on the road, he has to give his truck a thorough check. Most important thing I check on the morning, a fifth wheel pin. I always make sure that clip has got to be going through that loop. The fifth wheel pin attaches the truck to the trailer. I've seen it done before, where obviously on a, on a night time in a sleep, they've pulled the pin and the driver's driven off and the trailer's just gone straight onto the deck. Always check it, you know you've got a job the next day. <laughs> Trampers prefer to spend the night in the safety of Stobart's depots. But last night, Mark parked at Doncaster Services. There you go. That's what happens in services. Someone's soft curtain so they can see in the back of it. And you see, there's only stuff at the front. Mark takes the trailer to a nearby Stobart yard to be fixed. Maintenance team is vital. While we're sat there, we're losing money. With over 850 incidents monthly, the maintenance teams are kept busy. A firm as big as this, your trucks have got to be healthy to go on the road, and they'll fix it as fast as they can to get you back on the road again. It's a costly process, 
with Stobart spending £21,000 a month in repairs to curtains alone. Using a hot air gun set to 200 degrees centigrade and a roller, a small patch of spare curtain is welded onto the damaged area and the repair is sealed. Poor thing's scarred for life now, look. <laughs> 20 minutes later, Mark and Gabrielle Rose head for the Crick Depot to pick up his daily orders. But he's in for some unexpected news. Hi. And I go and told you to pick up returns, but it's not. You're losing your truck and gaining a new one. You're going to have to give up Gabrielle, I'm afraid. Oh, sorry. OK. I know you didn't want to. I can't swear. <laughs> <laughs> no. Right, okay, fair enough. The Stobart fleet has a fast turnover. They put seven new trucks on the road a day, costing the company around £50 million a year. With over 300,000 miles on the clock, it's Gabrielle Rose's turn to be replaced by a younger model. But it's bittersweet news for Mark. <laughs> Obviously, I've got my daughter's name on the one I've got, so a bit mixed emotions, really. I'm happy, but at the same time, I'm sad. Ah, well, I had to lose it one day, I suppose. New trucks start life plain white, then they get wrapped. Every Volvo truck has seven panels that need to be covered with 20 sections of vinyl in the famous Stobart livery. Each section gets attached individually using magnets to hold it in place. The vinyl drop has to be painstakingly baked on with a heat gun to shrink the film around all the nooks and crannies, ironing out all the bubbles. On average, it takes a bit of seven hours to wrap a single truck. If it goes wrong, they have to start all over again. So the team of 12 aim to get a minimum of eight done a day. Finally, the lucky girl's name is attached, adding a unique personality to each vehicle. Mark's heading up the M6 to Stobart's Chelford Depot near Manchester. He's about to pick up his new truck. Obviously, mine's Gabby R. Rose. Now, to me, that's one of the best names, because it's my daughter's name. If it's got a stupid name on it, I won't be very happy. I'll probably get something like, I don't know, Edith or Hillary or something stupid. Not a very bad name. My nan was called Hillary. <laughs> Mark's old truck might be part exchanged, or it could be used by other drivers for shorter journeys. Oh, this stays on flight. I hope somebody else gets it and looks after it. If they don't, I'll kill them. It's, uh, it's immaculate. My baby. Gabrielle Rose is packed with personal items that Mark's collected over the years. I'll take everything out of this truck and put it in a new one. But where the do I start? <laughs> it's the end of a beautiful relationship and the start of a new one. Nervous. I'm... I am shaken. <laughs> don't like the name. There's nothing much I can do about it. I've just got to grin and bear it, get over it. It'll be all right. But if... <laughs> Just not Hilda or something stupid, or Evelyn. My other one was called Evelyn, my old, old truck. There's that many trucks now, there's that many names, isn't there? It's a gamble, it's a lottery. Yeah, we're going to get laughed at on the motorway, or you're going to get left alone. And I don't want to get laughed at. <laughs> yeah. I'm fire. That's my other daughter. <laughs> That's my other daughter, Phoebe Grace. Stobart knew that Mark would be upset when he lost Gabrielle Rose, so they organised for him to have his new truck named after his baby daughter. I can't believe it. It's your finale. Oh, I'm well proud of that. I am absolutely well proud. Next time on Eddie Stobart Trucks and Trailers, we follow the drivers as they make deliveries to the World Rally in Finland. But will some faulty brakes stop them in their tracks? Break, Jim, we're gone.